And I'm Leland. Today we're going to be talking to you about the ninth principle of green chemistry, which is catalysis. This principle states that catalytic reagents, as selective as possible, are superior to stoichiometric reagents. In the synthesis, the term stoichiometric refers to the simple ratio between reagents in a balanced chemical reaction. The term catalytic refers to a substance that speeds up a chemical reaction. A catalyst is something that participates in a reaction but does not undergo permanent change. The term selective here means that the reaction happens on a location on the molecule where we want it and only where we want it. The problem with unselective reagents was encountered in video 8. To illustrate these terms, consider the following example. Let's say you have a group of babies and you want to put shoes on them. Putting eight shoes on four babies yields four babies with shoes. In this case, the stoichiometric ratio between shoes and babies is 8 to 4. In lowest terms, that's 2 to 1. However, simply giving the shoes to the babies is unlikely to lead to any desired outcome, because babies lack the motor skills to put shoes on their own feet. In chemistry terms, the babies are unreactive towards shoes. If only there was some way to speed up this process, some helper like a catalyst. Smart! So if we add an adult to the situation, the adult can put shoes on the first baby, then the second baby, and then the third baby, and then the fourth baby. We achieve our desired outcome much faster with the adult's help. At the end, the adult is unchanged by the process of putting shoes on a baby's feet, just like how a catalyst is unchanged during a chemical reaction. It's easy to see that catalysts can make reactions more convenient. But in a green chemistry sense, why are they preferable to stoichiometric reagents? To answer this question, we'll turn to an example from organic chemistry. We want to react this ketone with this hydrogen to make our desired product alcohol. However, a mixture of just ketone and hydrogen do not react with each other. One solution to this problem is to use a more reactive source of hydrogen, namely sodium borohydride followed by water. By employing this pair of reagents, we can synthesize the desired product. However, because we used stoichiometric amounts of sodium borohydride and water, we generated stoichiometric amounts of waste. The atom economy of this reaction leaves much to be desired. For more on this concept, check out our video too. We want to avoid producing waste products for a number of reasons. Depending on the nature of the waste product, it may adversely impact humans and or the environment. To check out more of this, click on video 3. If we're producing waste, that means we're spending reaction space, time, and money on materials that is ultimately not incorporated into our final product. Furthermore, the waste must also be treated and disposed safely. All this takes more resources away from our purpose of synthesizing chemicals we will need. We are not being as efficient as we could be. A better solution to our chemical problem is to combine ketone, hydrogen, and a catalyst such as palladium on carbon. This combination of reagents yields the desired product. Just as the adult helper in the first example orients the shoe so they fit on the baby's feet, the catalyst orients the hydrogen so that it is incorporated into the ketone to form the desired product. No waste is generated, and the catalyst can be filtered off and reused. So remember, when given a choice between stoichiometric reagent and a catalytic reagent, be green and always choose catalytic. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to view the rest of our series on the principles of green chemistry. If you want to learn more about the Green Chemistry Initiative, check us out at our website, Facebook, or Twitter.